Good morning, everyone. This is the third Sunday of Epiphany. It's an absolutely gorgeous day today outside. The sun is shining. It may be cold, but it's a great, wonderful day to be in the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to know that um, we have discovered that if you go onto your um, bar where you sign into your Zoom, you have the ability to turn on closed captioning. So if you need to, um, and you maybe can't hear everything, then turn on closed captioning and everything that we say will be printed right at the bottom so that you can see it without obstructing your screen. Let us pray. Lord God, this is the day that you have made. We do rejoice and are so excited in it. We got a chance to wake up this morning, God, which means that we get a chance to do it over and do it in your name. We thank you, God, that this is a day that we know that you are truly with us and present in us. Be with us in this service, God. Let everyone who's here, let everyone who wanted to come, and even people who may have seen it later, God, hear and be touched by your word. God, help us to be fishers of men and women, that we may be able to spread the good news of the gospel to all that we see and be examples of what it is to live in the glory of your light. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let us walk together for a while and ask where we begin to build a world where love can grow and hope can enter in. To be the hands of healing and to plant the seed of peace. Sinning welcome, welcome to this place. You're invited to come and know God's grace. All are welcome, the love of God to share. Cause all of us are welcome here. All are welcome in this place. Let us all greet one another with these words. May the peace of Christ be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Oh, shucks. That's me. The word of God came to Jonah. The word of God comes to us. Go. Despite your fears. Speak. The truth of God. Love. Ah, your neighbor and your enemy. Forgive. As you have been forgiven. Receive. Grace upon grace. Overflowing from the fullness of God. And please join me. Our opening hymn will be number 209 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Blessed be the God of Israel. Number 209.
Holy One, God of creation. You call us to be your people, to carry your vision in this time and place, to go where you sent us, to help welcome your amazing good news as we gather in the presence of the risen Christ to spread the news that your realm is near. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, O God of creation. Fill us with your glorious spirit that we may share your good news with the world in need. Amen. Please join us from the comfort of your home with I Have Decided to Follow Jesus from The Faith We Sing, 2129. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. Then the Lord spoke to Jonah a second time, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh and deliver the message I have given you. This time Jonah obeyed the Lord's command and went to Nineveh, a city so large that it took three days to see it all. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. When God saw what they had done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind and did not carry out the destruction he had threatened. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew throwing a net into the water, for they fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little farther up the shore, Jesus saw Zebedee's sons, James and John, in a boat repairing their nets. He called them at once, and they also followed him, leaving their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired men. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Oh, God, thank you that you always show us the way. The way to be with you in humility, the way to lead people to you, but the way to be in community with each other. God, thank you. You always help us, even when we feel like we cannot be helped. But you, oh God, you, oh God, are the God of grace and mercy. And for that, we always give you thanks. We pray, God, as you hear the words, that your, our hearts be open to you. God, let the stumbling and stutter, stuttering of my speech not be a hindrance to hearing your word. Soften our heart and open our ears and open our minds to receive that we may be fed by you. In the precious name 
of your son, Jesus, our brother and kinsman redeemer. Amen and amen. This morning, we actually will be focusing on the Old Testament part of our scripture, on the Jonah story. Let me give you a little bit of context. Jonah was said to be the son of Amittai, who some historians, unverified nonetheless, believe that that was actually the son of the widow of Zarephath. Nevertheless, he was called by God to do a mission. He heard God tell him to go to Nineveh now. The problem with Nineveh is that Nineveh and Israel were sworn enemies. Nineveh was a warlike um, culture. And so for God to tell Jonah to go to Nineveh was not the thing he wanted to do. So we have to understand that he didn't really want to do anything to do, have anything to do with God's, what he perceived enemies of God. Again, what he perceived as enemies of God. So what did Jonah do? Jonah went the opposite direction. He got in a boat in the other way, got in the hull of the boat and knew and said, you know what? God can't see me there but God sees us everywhere. And so while they were in this ship, the storm came, the storm came. How often does that happen in our life? The storms come. The sailors who were superstitious said something caused this storm because this is not a natural storm they began to cast off all of their cargo to lighten the ship and hopefully be able to save the ship in the storm. But it didn't help and the storm raged in on even more. They decided at this point, they've got to figure out what it is. So they cast thought locks. There was, that was their dice. That's the way they figured out what was going on because they figured there's some God was mad with them. The lot fell on Jonah. We believe that at this point, they did argue, what can we do? We don't want to throw somebody out of the ship, but it sounds and it looks like he's the cause of the storm. So they did. They threw Jonah overboard. And as the history relates, the storm calmed. Jonah, as we read in chapter two, knows that he has basically messed up. It says in, the, in chapter two, he has this prayer that, oh God, I am in the deep. I am in a place in darkness. He says even in Sheol. At that point, God did hear his prayer. And it said that God prepared a, a fish. Now, we always hear about Jonah and the whale, but it may or may not be a whale. The point is that God divinely, divinely prepared a fish that was large enough to swallow Jonah and basically save him from, from drowning. In the belly of this fish, Jonah began to repent for not doing God's will. And at a point, God spoke to the fish again and spewed him into not, not just out of the sea, but he took him to where he was supposed to be in the first place, in the shores of Nineveh. So now we start at cha chapter three, where we where actually where our scriptures are. It says that the word of the Lord came again 
again to Jonah. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message that I give you. The message was that from in 40 days from now, your city will be destroyed. Now, imagine Jonah was in the belly of some type of big Cretaceous creature. In his head, there's got to be seaweeds and bit of bits of undigested fish guts and all kind of stuff. He must have looked a mess. And yet he had determined, as he said in his prayer, I will do what God told me to do. So he began to walk three days into this city saying, this city will be destroyed. Now, a little bit of context as well is that Nineveh was a pagan city and one of their gods was a fish god. So that may have given some weight to what Jonah was saying. Nevertheless, in the entire land, they heard him. Even the king heard him and the king decided, you're right. We have done wickedly. The king repented. He told everyone else to fast, to put up sackcloth and ashes. He even told the animals that they couldn't eat or drink. And the animals probably had no idea what was going on. But yet they did. They repented. And the reason we know they actually repented is that God decided that he would not destroy the city. I just want to take a minute to stop. Recognize that Jonah had his own agenda. But when God came, Jonah's agenda became, God's agenda became Jonah's agenda, that he decided that it is better to listen to God. And in doing that, the entire city was saved. In doing that, the entire city's lives was turned around. This story has been explained in so many different ways. They thought of it as a parable. They thought of it as history, but the underlying theme, whether you say it's history or, or parable, is that God loves us. God loves our good. God loves our bad. God loves our ugly. And God even loves us when we disobey. Parts of, these, of this story is relevant to all of us, all of us me included, I'm the chiefest, chiefest of sinners. I want you to see where you fit in this story. First of all, there is Jonah. Jonah is a prophet of God. He is a person who hears God. He is a person who follows God. And yet, and yet, He has his own opinions, political or otherwise, good or otherwise. He knows what he wants. He does not want to do something that is going to hurt anyone of, of his people. And the Ninevites were known for, for being enemies and warriors. He doesn't want the Ninevites to be saved. And yet God still loved the Ninevites. There is something about calling on God's name and saying, God, here I am. When you have given your life to God, I mean, actually given your life to God, then you said, here I am, God, send me. The send me may not be a place that you really want to go. We are all Jonah's at times. We're all times where we don't want to go where God sends us to go. 
but God has a purpose and a reason. And so the wonderful, graceful, patient thing about God is God gives us a second chance because in our humanity, we are faulty. In our humanity, you all know it. I do it. We all do it. There are times we say, I'm just not going to do that. But when we come around, just like the prodigal, prodigal son, God gives us that second chance. Then there are the, the sailors. Well, you say, well, what did the sailors do? They were doing what sailors do. They were sailing. They were business people. They could care less who was in their boat, what the passengers is like. It's like being a pilot of an of a airplane. They don't care. But when trouble came, they had to decide what to do. And they were trying to do the right thing. They were lightening the ship. They were tacking into the wind. They were doing the things that they thought would, would uh, cure the problem, but the problem wasn't cured. When they discovered that the problem may have been Jonah, as a human, they did not want to get rid of another human being. But they must have felt that this was the only way and so they threw Jonah off the boat. There are times when you're doing the right thing in the right way and trouble still comes and you try to figure out what is going on with me? Why is things just happening? Why didn't I get that job that I'm supposed to get? Why am I in IRS trouble when I pay my taxes? Why is my water bill a thousand dollars? Wait, God, what's going on with me? And we find sometimes that is something or someone in your life that God is saying you're not in right relationship with them. I've had friends that I have known till I went since I was a child, but those people create a negative influence in my life and say, as I'm praying and saying, God, what should I do? God is saying, you can pray for them, but you can't be so close that they're influencing and pulling you away from me. So I had to make the hard decision to say that I can love you, but love you from a distance. That happens in our lives at times. Then there are the Ninevites. In this, in this parable, the Ninevites were so evil that the evil came up to God's light and God's thought. But God understood that the Ninevites could be redeemed. Understand that in our community, even in our world, there is evil. There is evil. People go their own way. And the thing about the Ninevites is it said that the entire city was evil. In fact, so evil, evil that there was not a word of God, that God had to send a stranger and not just a stranger, not just a foreigner, but God had to send someone who was their enemy to tell them to straighten up. Now, what would that be like if you are a group of people in a city and somebody from outside had to tell you, y'all aren't doing right, would you listen? Would you change, straighten up? But God had to have been working even in the hearts of the king, in the hearts of the people, because when they fasted, they repented. And when they repented, God knows their heart that God relented and did not destroy the city. Now, there's one part, there's one actor in this story that I haven't talked about, and that's the fish. 
That's the fish. It said that God prepared this fish. Sometimes we are like that fish. We're ordinary. There's, there's nothing extraordinary about it, but God has been preparing us all our lives to do something. And that thing that God prepares us to do is the thing that will change the world. For the fish don't know what it is, don't know how it is, but recognize something in this divine story that don't Jonah, once he had was swallowed by the fish, that the fish didn't chew him because he could have. He didn't digest him because he didn't, he could have. He didn't put in so much water that it drowned the Jonah. The fish was divinely prepared to carry Jonah from where he was going in the opposite direction to where God wanted Jonah to be. In the end of that, it says that God spoke to the fish as well and dumped him on the shore. Think about that for a moment. I'm just a fish. I am sw swimming, but God has been talking to me since the very beginning. God has been telling me, I have something for you to do. Just wait for me. In this scripture, recognize that God is the ultimate actor. This entire book is about how God loves us. This entire book is about how God, first of all, loved Jonah, loved Jonah enough to give Jonah a second chance, even when Jonah was disobedient. God loved the soldier, the sailors enough to save them, enough to, to give them a chance to do the right thing, even though it was a hard thing. God loved the Ninevites enough that even though their entire culture was evil, that God gave them a second chance. And God loved the ordinary fish whale, whatever it was, so much that at the beginning of this fish's life, that it had been seen by the creator and uniquely designed to do what God called it to do. So I ask you in closing, who are you and where are you? Are you a Jonah like I have been so many times? I hear God's word, but I decide to do what I wanna do anyway. And I decide to uh, run away and sometimes take people with us? Am I a sailor? I'm really trying to do God's word, but I'm caught up in a group or a mindset that I think that this is the right way only to find it's not and then have to make a decision what to do? Am I part of the Ninevites? That my whole world is going this way. So I figure that's the right way to go. Even though I know to do right, I choose to do what everyone else is doing and do what's convenient. Or am I a fish who God has uniquely created and made for a purpose for such a time as this? Am I willing to wait patiently for God for the day that says, it's your turn, it's your time. Do what I've told you to do. And when you do, you recognize it may be just to go and help someone else do what God has called them. In our New Testament scripture, 
Jesus called and told his disciples to be fishers of men, fishers of women, to bring others to the good news. Sometimes we have to be the fish. Sometimes we have to be the fisher person. Make a decision as we all, I all, even every one of us have to decide every day. Will I be willing to go to Nineveh? Or will I be willing to go into wherever the fisher, fish are to capture them, to bring them into God's love? Amen and amen. Please join me in our response to the sermon. It is two fishermen in the faith we sing number 2101. The faith we sing 2101. Amen. Amen. This is a time for the offering. And sometimes we are like the fish and we offer ourselves to service of, to God. Sometimes we are like the Ninevites and we have to give of our, of our sustenance and substance. But when we are responding to God's word, recognize that we are touching the midst of our hearts. We really do affirm you and all of us that you are such faithful givers. We respond to God's word through your faithful giving. At the, in the page you see 
there is a, uh, a link there that you can respond to old Audubon. We are one with you in mission and your offering really does uh, ex extend our hands and feet to those who are in need, to those who have the ability and to those to whom God has called. It's really easy to do, just click, click the link and at, one, at any point, at any time, we appreciate your offering, amen. It is time for the announcements. Um, I see that uh, one of the very uh, respond. Oh, let me let me start here with our prayers and concerns. If you would print out the last two pages or the last page of your bulletin, um, you can see their prayers and concerns are there. Please continue to pray for those who are, are in our prayer list. Be, be sure that you reach out to them and their family members because God does hear our smallest prayer and our loudest noise, our screams of frustration, but our dances in joy. So please continue to pray in our for our prayer list. Amen. Um, the there was a concern right now. Um, with the uh, online um, uh, giving, uh, the link is there, but they were concerned about um, giving and recognize that you do uh, have the ability to, uh, when you go to Amazon, to donate to the church. Um, Art, if that would, if you could help somebody, because they said they could not find old Artabine in the uh, prayer. I mean, in the uh, Amazon list. So that would be a wonderful thing if you could uh, clear that uh, up yeah. to for us. I'll tell you what I can do is um, maybe next weekend I can um, take three minutes and show everyone how it's done. And I'll also put I'll also write something for the bulletin. Amen. Thank you so much, Art. Art and Dan have worked so hard in our finance and to keep everything straight. And we appreciate everything that they have done. And you, you would be surprised um, that your, um, your pennies add up. In fact, uh, for this past week, I've actually just donated $3.50. It doesn't sound like a lot, um, but it's $3.50 that is donated directly to the church. And it doesn't cost me a thing. Um, so Art will help us and, and get us um, so that the donations go directly to O Audubon. Amen. We still have our noonday prayer on Wednesdays. That is the access code. I am there. I appreciate those of you who have come to pray. Um, I do uh, sit there and I um, and there until the last person leaves. Also, if you have prayer or prayer request, and it's not Wednesday or it's any other day, feel free to, to contact me, whether by phone, and my phone is always on, or by email, or by the, um, the uh, Old Audubon Facebook or Gmail page. So prayer is so, so important. And it's one of the things that I'm a fish. I'm a fish. And one of the things that God has called me to do is to pray. 
And that's the thing that I can do quickly and easily all the time. Even when I don't feel like it, God says, no, you're going to pray. There are many of you out there that are prayer warriors. I know it because you send me prayers as well. So join to our prayer line on Wednesdays or at any other time where you say, hey, I just need prayer or I want to pray with you. So we appreciate it. I see somebody, Julie, says that she found and signed up easily for Amazon's Amazon Smile. So thank you so much, Julie. Our first quarter mission is Pro Bono Resource Center of Maryland. They provide legal, free legal assistance to Maryland in immigration, housing, and debt relief. It's now a time where there are people who are, um, are could possibly lose their houses or lose their home. And this organization helps them in anything legally that they can do. And because it's pro bono, they don't charge for their source services. But as you know, anything that is done is not um, free in terms of the people. They still need, um, they still need resources. So as you're donating, if you would just pinch off a piece for the pro bono resource center. The wonderful thing about Old Artabine is that for every quarter, every quarter, we donate to a mission organization without fail. And this is our mission organization for this quarter. Amen. We are continuing to put masks on our fence. We're also doing hats and gloves and granola bars. Uh, there are people who have donated coats even and, and scarves and other cold weather, weather things. Now it's going to be, it's supposed to snow tomorrow and Monday. And so our unhoused neighbors really do look for it. I have seen them, they're sleeping on the grates, on the grates. And in this country where there is enough for everyone, God has actually touched those who are in God's kingdom to give for those who are in need. So if you can, if you got a, a six pack of socks, donate some of them. Or if you get a granola bar, get a box or water. Just give extra because our angel, our minister, uh, Mimi, consistently at all times ministers to our unhoused need neighbors. And if you want to minister with her, give her a call or text her. You know, she works during the day, but text her, she, re re uh, she responds. And you can go with her to put things on the, on the fence. It is just another act of ministry. Amen. We talked about shopping on Amazon and Art Will. Um, we'll put that in the bulletin if you're having a hard time. I was able to go to, you have to go to Amazon Smile um, and then put it on there. So it is is there, amen. And I thank you, Art, you're right. Emphasis says, one, we can't emphasize how much Mimo, Mimi is an angel um, in our community and for our church, amen. There are, and there's something that I, I did leave out and I'll promise I put it in constant contact for uh, Monday, but we're going to have a Lenten Bible study, amen. It is for the fear of the, of the other by Will Willimon. Uh, there's enough time to get your book. It also is, comes as an e-book as well. It is Thursdays from seven to eight. Um, and so we, we are so excited. This is so exciting because it actually re recognize, allows us to understand that God is actually the only one and we're all the other when we, when we uh, compare ourselves to God. So this is a great uh, Bible study that will be starting and it's starting, I think, uh, February 25th. Um, it, it, is the, it is the Wednesday after Ash Wednesday. Also on the, uh, and I apologize for not putting these on the announcements, there will be an Ash Wednesday service. There will be an Ash Wednesday service. So look out for it. 
We'll have the link for it. It will still be virtual. Um, I'm working on getting everybody um, uh, crosses uh, for Ash Wednesday. So look forward to that. And I apologize for not putting that in the bulletin. I won't do it again. And for now on, it'll be there. Amen. We would like to share, if you would like to share your old Audubon story, please let us know. I've been um, trying to contact and talk to as many people as I can, and you'd be surprised how people have been affected by old Audubon. We like to know. So we, and, and for, for those of us who are new, we'd like to get to know you as well. So please let us know your story and your testimony, amen. Um, and there will be a virtual retreat for the church. It is just a open mic time read, uh, led by Rod Miller, who people know from before. Uh, we will send out the link for the date and the time, but he's one who's very familiar with us, and but he is a um, an unattached person, so he doesn't have a pony in the race, but it's so that everyone gets a chance to openly express where we were, where we are now, and where do we hope to be, not next year, next year, the year after, and five years from now. What is the vision? What do you want us to see and do as the members of Old Audubon? Are there, if there are no more announcements, Then it is the time for our sharing of our joys and our concerns. It is a honor and a privilege. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And please join me, our closing hymn will be number 578 in the United Methodist hymnal, God of Love and God of Power.
Let us bow our heads and our hearts for the benediction. Eternal God, the refuge and help of all of your children, we praise you for all you have given us, for all you have done for us, for all that you are to us. In our weaknesses, you are our strength. In our darkness, you are our light. In our sorrow, you are our comfort and peace. We cannot number your blessings. We cannot declare all of your love. For all your blessings, we bless you. May we live as in your presence and love the things you love and serve you in our daily lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. Have a great day today. It is really beautiful today. Enjoy it until the uh, weather gets funny. <laughs> but recognize and, and pray for all of those who do not have a house to go to and who are living on the heats of the greats. Remember that God still loves them. God loves us. And God loves us all the time. And we love you. And there is nothing you can do about it. Go in peace. If you get a chance, stay for a while. Give everybody a hug in the chat rooms. And otherwise, we'll see you next week. Amen.